Praise the Lord, it's, uh, it's good to be with you here tonight, and uh, it's, we're pleased to be along. And uh, if you're here for the first time, I wouldn't know, but you're welcome. But let's stand tonight and sing our first hymn. Our first hymn is, Would You Be Free From Your Burden of Sin? There's power in the blood. Hallelujah. I think Spurgeon has said that, he said, morality, morality will keep a man out of prison, but only the blood of Jesus Christ will keep a man out of hell. Hallelujah. We need to be washed in the blood. 288. Thank you, ladies. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, oh Lord Jesus, we come to you tonight and we thank you for the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you we're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood, a land without spot and without blemish. Oh, we thank you we can say tonight unto him who has loved us and washed us from sin in his own precious blood. And Lord, we thank you we only stand here Lord, we only sit here clean this evening because of your precious blood. We thank you while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We thank you for the wonderful news of the gospel. We thank you for salvation. Lord, we thank you for the liberty we have in this land. Lord, that tonight church doors can be opened, Lord, through this land and sinners can come across the threshold and hear the gospel freely. Lord, we pray tonight through this land as your word goes forth. It will go forth with a clear sound, Lord. And Lord, we just pray across this land, Lord, men and women, young and old, Lord, we give their hearts and lives to you. Lord, we would pray tonight for those who would love to be here, but Lord, maybe just not able to get along tonight. Lord, we just pray even in their homes, 
they would know of your comfort. Maybe listening to it on the, on the, on the uh, screen there, Lord, we just pray you, you just minister to them. But Lord, we pray in this meeting, Lord, we pray again that you'd be glorified and magnified, lifted up. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for all your goodness and all your mercy to us. We praise your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. I can ask my wife to come. And uh, we're going to sing to you about Calvary. And uh, this first song we're going to sing, it was written by a man that lived in the northeast of Scotland. We never met him, but he gave the words to a friend of ours. And uh, just learned from a plectrum. And, uh, but it's, it's to the tune of Hadelweiss. And uh, I'm telling you that in case I don't play the tune right. <laughs> But, uh, you know, if we, if there wasn't a Calvary, of course, there'd be no salvation. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Then he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And, um, you know, he's not in heaven tonight building mansions. Heaven is a prepared place. It was prepared at the foundation of the world, but... Jesus went to the cross. That's where Jesus went. He went, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. And friend, unless we come to that place where we die to self, we can never live for Christ. And that's where we must come to. Without, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But we need to come ourselves. We need to come to that place where we, where we bow the knee and, and die to self that we might live for Christ. If you, if you might know the little chorus of this this little uh, song I know it's been sung before but um, it's a lovely little song
Sing our second hymn then together. This evening it's 378 in our books. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. 378 in our hymn books. Thank you. Stand and sing.
Christ shall come with trumpet sound. And when Christ comes, you know, the first time he came, there was just a few shepherds there, and Mary and Joseph, that's all that was there that night. But the next time he comes, friend, there's going to be, it's going to be like lightning flashing from the east to the west, and there's going to be a great shout. And the Bible says, every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him, and every knee shall bow. There'll be multitudes that bow when they see the Saviour, and there'll be multitudes that will bow when they see the judge. Friend, he's coming. He's coming for those that are part of his family. Well, Alistair's going to come and, and share the notices with us. Thank you. So, you know, Alistair was saying about travelling here tonight, but, you know, I was just thinking when he said that, over the years we've been, been travelling for 44 years, preaching the gospel to young and old, and, you know, we've travelled thousands and thousands of miles when we lived in Scotland. We lived there for many years. We travel at least 2,000 miles a month. But we, as soon as we got here tonight, we said, thank you, Lord. We're very conscious, and we always pray for his travelling mercies. We thank him. You know, you hear so many accidents on the road today, but we thank him for his travelling mercies. And that's fact, in the summer, when we came here in the summer, I was telling the boys and girls one night, one of the, I mean, one, one night, we was, we was nearly here, but we were still on the dual carriageway, and a fellow just pulled onto the dual carriageway, couldn't have seen us, I don't know about ABS breaking, but I was just very conscious that God was with us that night and, uh, and, and kept us from a, a tragic accident. And, and I could tell you of many, many times, not that I'm a bad driver, but just, you know, when, when people don't indicate, or they, they do indicate and don't go around the corner. But we thank the Lord and we thank him for his goodness. Remember us in this coming month, finally our son, who's 41, is getting married on the 26th of of November, so it's a very exciting time for us all, and uh, our family from America, Leah and Andrew, and the three, three boys, or the two boys and the one girl, Ezra's seven, and Leland's just turned six, and Evie Joy, she's just about 15 months, but she's, she's just so cute, and um, so anyway, remember us, remember us next, this coming few weeks, it's going to be a busy house, and remember the work in the schools, you know, it was in a school, I'm not going to say where it was, because I know this but you know, just not so long ago, we was in a school, we was taking the Scripture Union, and afterwards, the teacher was just speaking to us, and she just burst into tears. And we need to pray for our Christian teachers. She said, you know, there used to be such a liberty in this school to share the gospel, but principles change and things can get difficult. So just remember, you know, there's a lot of, you have a lot of Christian teachers in your schools, and and, and pray that, that God will send more Christian teachers to your schools and pray that God will save, save the principles uh, and, uh, and if, if there's principles that would, would hinder the gospel from being preached in our schools, then we need to pray that God will either save them or move them on because, you know, it, it's, these, these boys and girls, a lot of them, you know, it's wonderful you had a good crowd in the Sunday school this afternoon, but that's the only time. That's the only time maybe this week they would have heard the gospel and they will hear the gospel. If we fail to teach our children the ways of the Lord, we can be certain that others will not fail to teach them the ways of the world. And it's a tremendous work. It's, it's a very important work to tell girls and boys about the Lord Jesus. And, you know, we've heard, you never know when you're talking to boys and girls, whether it's in Sunday school or good news clubs or in assemblies, you never know the work that's been done. But over the years, God just opens a little window and we hear of boys and girls who got saved in an assembly, got saved in a children's meeting. I'm sure you have. So, so remember the children's workers through the land. Remember the school teachers. Remember God to keep these doors open. You know, it's so wonderful. If you was in China or, you know, some countries, you, you wouldn't be allowed. You know, in North Korea, you'd be put in prison. But what a liberty we have just now. And that's why the door is open. While it's day, let, let us work for the night is coming. Can I ask my wife to sing one more song? She's going to come. My wife sings like a night in gal and I sing like a gal in the night. You've heard that one, haven't you? <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, she used to say to me when we were, we were at Bible school together, we, there was a little group of us sang and uh, she used to say to me, watch my lips. <laughs> She was telling me to keep timing, but I think she was just wanting me to stare into her eyes there. I don't, I don't know. But uh, this little song, you know, you know the chorus to these, you know, we're not performers tonight, you know that. And uh, so if you know the chorus to this little song, 
Just join him with us. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. So long. I search for life's meaning. See you. Do you go up? Oh, no, see. have your Bibles with you tonight, if we turn to if Mark's Gospel, Mark's Gospel chapter 11, Mark's Gospel chapter 11. And reading from verse 1 of Mark's Gospel chapter 11. And when they came nigh unto Jerusalem, Unto Bethany and Bethany and the Mount of Olivet, he sendeth forth two of his disciples. And he said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereupon never a man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do you this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way, and they found a colt tied by the door without, in a place where the two ways met. And they loosed him, verse 7, and they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him. And he sat upon him. Amen. And God will add a blessing to his word. Let's, let's pray. Lord, we thank you tonight. We thank you the entrance of your word giveth light. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the, the written word that we have tonight, Lord. And we just pray now as we come to your word, we thank you 
for your help in this meeting so far, but Lord, we just pray. Lord, give us ears that would hear tonight. Lord, let us be very conscious of your presence. Lord, I just pray you'd help me, Lord. Lord, just to share what you put upon my heart. But Lord, we pray in it all you'd be glorified. Lord, we just love you tonight. And Lord, we know you'd have all men everywhere to be saved. And Lord, we just thank you. You've, you've said it's through the foolishness of preaching. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would open blinded eyes, take the vow that covers our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus said to these two disciples, he said, he said to go into the village of Bethany there and they would find a colt. And in verse 4, he says this in verse 4, in a place, in a place where the two ways met. Maybe you're there tonight when I was a young boy at Sunday school. I don't know if, they, if you used to sing it. We used to sing, I met Jesus at the crossroads. Where the two ways meet. Satan there was standing there, said, me to come this way. I've got lots of goodies I can give to you today, but I said no. There's Jesus here to see what he offers me. Down here my sin's forgiven. Up there my home in heaven, praise God. That's the way for me. But Jesus said you'll find this colt tied in a place where the two ways meet. At life's crossroads at the fork in the road. Of course, Jesus spoke in Matthew's Gospel, didn't he? He said these words in Matthew chapter 7, Enter ye in at the straight gate, verse 13, For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, and few there be, Jesus said, that find it. Jesus said there's a broad road, but it leads to destruction, devastation. That's why there's broken homes and broken lives and broken marriages. That's why there's violence and selfishness and suffering tonight and wars and abuse. It's all because man mainly is going down that broad road. That broad road, you know, it, it just goes his own way. But Jesus said there's a straight gate and a narrow way. That word narrow means a way of suffering, a way of tribulation, a way of affliction. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, he must deny himself. He must take up his cross and he must follow me. Listen to what the Bible says about Moses in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing. And friend, you have to make a choice tonight. There's two roads, there's two ways. There's your way or there's God's way. Joshua said to the people, one of the last things he said, he said, choose you this day who you will serve. But friend, you will serve either God or the devil. Elijah said to the people in the days of Ahab, how long will you waver between two opinions? And friend, there's a choice to be made tonight. There's a road to, to walk upon. You can go your own way and, and be dragged down that, that broad road. Any dead fish can go downstream, they say, but it, it, takes, it takes a living a living fish to go upstream. And Christ come to give eternal life, choosing rather to suffer the afflictions with the people of, the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And friend, we know... There's pleasures in sin for a season. But the truth is the wages of sin is death. But friend, the gift of God tonight, the gift of God is everlasting life. But it's only through Jesus Christ our Lord, not through works of righteousness, but through his grace and through his mercy. And friend, though it be a narrow road, friend, it leads to life. It leads to abundant life. And the Bible says the present sufferings of this world are worth to be, to be compared with the glory that is to come. And friend, even though it may sometimes seem like, you know, you're alone, Paul said no man stood with him. Uh, when he writes to Timothy, the, the last letter he wrote, he said, but the Lord stands with me. But yet he knew he was fighting a good fight. Peter says it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. The psalmist tells us he gives us a song in the night. And friend, 
The Bible promises he gives an everlasting joy. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come to sing it unto Zion. An everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. Friend, those that come to him, he gives everlasting life, everlasting joy. And friend, he gives hope and he gives peace. But friend, it is a narrow road. You need to come through a narrow gate, forsaking the world and the things of this world and following Christ, but it leads to life. But friend, it is a crossroads. Of course, the Bible says there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death and destruction. The Bible says, Behold, in Jeremiah 21, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Friend, there's a way of life and there's a way of death. The choice is yours. Listen to what it says in Deuteronomy, chapter 11 and verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Friend, there's a blessing and there's a curse. And the blessing is to those that obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I've commanded you this day. And the curse, if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God and turn aside out of the way. Friend, there's a crossroads, there's a fork in the road tonight. Which way will you go? Friend, Jesus said, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. And friend, it's not just about eternal, it's not about eternal life in heaven. It's about abundant life. Jesus said, I have come to give life and life more abundantly. Friend, it's the way the transgressor is hard. Friend, if, the, if you're in this house or, or listen to this message some other time, friend, if, you're, if, if your life is hard tonight, if, you, if you're going your own way and everything's going wrong, well, that's what God promises. He promises the way of the transgressor is hard and he keeps his promises. But friend, his way, his, he says, my yoke is easy. His burden is light. His way is perfect. Friend, it's a wonderful way. What a wonderful change, the hymn writer wrote, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure since Jesus came into my heart. See, those that know not Christ, are, oh, they're all full of the joy when the sun's shining and then they're sad when it's not. They're full of joy when they win the lottery and then they're sad. But there's a steadfast joy that you can have tonight. There's a joy unspeakable and full of glory that you can have. In his presence there is fullness of joy. This is right, at his right hand there's pleasures. The Bible says forevermore. But the Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. Turning everyone to his own way. You see God's way says, God's way says we should love him with all of our heart that we should love one another, that we should forgive, we should bless those that curse us, pray for those that despitefully use us. I always says, I'm going, to get, I'm going to get him back. I'm going to put myself first. I remember when I first started on the building sites in London, a, a fellow said to me, he said, son, he said, son, you look after number one. Well, that's man's way. That's man's way. But God says, you, you worship me, you serve me, you, you think of others next. Love God with all of your heart and love your neighbour as yourself. Friend, there is only one way and that is through Christ. But maybe tonight, friend, you're at that crossroads. You're thinking, will I go the broad road or the narrow road? But friend, you need to go the narrow road because it leads to life. The broad road leads to death. But you notice here in this little reading in verse 4 that this, this colt was tied. It was tied. It was at the crossroads. It was in a place where the Two ways meet, but it was tied. That word, if you, it means to be bound. And friend, tonight, maybe you want to walk this way, but you're tied. You're bound. You're tied. Many of you may be tied and bound in religion. There's a man in the Bible, his name was Saul. And my, he, he was a religious man. If any was, was a religious man, listen to the circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel. The tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, is touching the law. A Pharisee, a friend, he knew all about religion. He was a very religious man. He had a great grasp of the Old Testament. 
He believed in God. He believed in the God of creation. But he knew not Christ. He didn't know if sins forgiven. He had, he had religion. Friend, it was religious people that said, crucify him. Crucify him. And friend, our religion, our religion will never save us. You know, people say to me, oh, I've been a, me- I've been a member in this church or this, this denomination for, for 35 years. Friend, it, it means nothing to God. Many years ago, we was in Aberdeen. And uh, we were speaking at a little Baptist church, but they were meeting in a school. They were meeting it was Shedoxley Shed- Baptist Church. They were meeting in a school, and uh, after after I'd preached, a lady came up to me. She said, "I must tell you this." She said, "I've been a Sunday school teacher for over twenty five years." She said, "But just a couple of weeks ago, I was waiting at the bus stop, and I miss I'd missed the bus." to go to church on a Sunday morning. She said, so I saw people walking into, the, walking into the school with Bibles. That was the days when people carried Bibles, <laughs> real ones. So she said, I came into this church and I, for the first time she said, I understood the gospel and I got saved. For, for 20, over 25 years, she'd been teaching boys and girls that Jesus was the resurrection and the life that he died, that he rose again. One day he's coming again. The parables, the miracles, the Old Testament prophets for t- over 25 years. She had religion, but she didn't have Christ. And friend, what did Paul say in Corinthians? If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And friend, you need to be born again of the spirit of God. You need to be able to say with the apostle Paul, it's Christ within us, the hope of glory. Friend, your religion, your religion will never save you. You're bound by religion. There's other people today that are bound by fear. What, what will man say? The fear of man is a snare. It's a snare. Well, what will people say? They, they think I am saved. They think, they, 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 I've been in this church so long. Oh, they think I am saved. What, what will they say? If I, friend, fear of man will send you to hell. We had a man that came to a little, little church we went to in a little place called Bottom, just outside Peterhead in Scotland, right on the coast there. And he was preaching, but he, he shared his testimony. And he said, for some years, he was in a church. He'd come along to a church, and he was very inv- he got involved. He, he, was, he just loved the, the, the fellowship. And isn't it wonderful to be amongst God's people? And he just, lo- he just loved to feel the love, and he, he got involved in different things. And, he was, and people just assumed he was saved. But he said, one day a preacher came to that church and preached repentance and he realised he'd never repented of his sin. He'd never been born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb. He got wonderfully saved. Thank God for that preacher. And friend, you, you can be bound by fear tonight. Of course, you can be bound by pride. You know, the Bible says God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. But people say, oh, well, I've lived, a, I've lived a better life. I've lived a better life than most. I've lived a better life than... Look at her. She calls herself a Christian. <laughs> I've, you know what she did? You know what, you know what he did? My friend, the Bible says you, you need to humble yourself. The Bible says the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The humble shall hear thereof and be, be glad. You know, there's a man in the Bible, and his name was Naaman, and... Uh, you know, he, he, he was a commander of the army of Syria. He was a great powerful man. He was a friend of the king. I mean, he, he was just second to none, just a king. And then, you know, Naaman, he just led that army. He'd won many battles. He was very strong, very courageous. One day he realized he had leprosy. And this leprosy, well, you know, it was, it was going to just eat away and destroy him and kill him slowly. Just like sin. He just slowly works away at man and destroys him, just starts off with just a little spot on his finger, just a little, just a little mark on his arm. And sin, little sins become big sins, and, and sins, sin separates us and kills and separates us from God. The Bible says there's no lies in heaven, in Revelations. It doesn't say no, only big lies, it says no lies. And Naaman realised that he was, in, he, he, he was in big trouble, and anyway, eventually... He had a little maid and she said, if you go to the prophet in, 
in Israel and he went, he went there and he went to, eventually he comes to Elisha. He comes there, you know, he's got all his arm on, I'm, I'm the great name and, and, and he was very discouraged because Elisha didn't even come and meet him. He just sent a messenger. And friend, that's all I am tonight, I'm just a messenger. No one really important, this is just a messenger. But the message was, you must go down, you must go down to the, to the river, the Jordan River, and be washed. You must go down seven times into the river. And Naaman, he, he said, what? Surely there's better rivers in Damascus. You know, he was so proud. Why didn't the man come up and meet me? Why didn't he, doesn't he know who I am? He sends the messenger. And Naaman was so proud. And he refused. He said, why should I go down in that river? He couldn't understand why he should go down in this dirty river, Jordan, seven times. It didn't make sense. And he was just about to turn around and go home. And one of his servants, one of his servants said this. He came near to him and he spoke to him and he said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, would thou not have done it? How much rather will you not wash and be clean? Wash and be clean. And friend, it's only the blood of Jesus Christ tonight. We're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver or gold. We won't be saved by religion or being good or being kind or coming to church. Friend, we're only saved through the blood of Christ. If Jesus thought you and I could be saved any other way, he wouldn't have hung on that cross. He gave himself. Nobody took his life. He laid it down. He that knew no sin became sin, that you and I might know of God's righteousness. Even God the Father turned his back. He couldn't look at him. Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But he knew. He'd already prayed the, the evening before. Three times. Three to, he, said, he, he said, my father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. But he knew there was no other way. He said to the disciples, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is only one way. And for Naaman, there was only one way. But did you see, it took a humbling. And you know, it, he, just, he just came to his senses he said, you know what, I, I can be proud, and, but I'll die. And friend, your pride will take you to hell. Your pride will take you to hell tonight. It was, it was pride that turned angels into devils, into demons. But it's humility that makes men as angels. And friend, your pride will take you to hell for all eternity. And Naaman, he he got off his high horse and he went down. Why seven times? Why the Jordan River? I'll tell you why. Because that's what God said. That's all we need to know. We just need to do what God says. He says we must be, he says confess your sin. And God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And when Naaman came out the seventh time, his skin was like that. Of a young boy, his skin was made whole. And this is what he said. He said, Behold, now I know, and now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. You see, the preaching of the gospel, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us that are saved is the power of God. He he pleases God through the foolishness. It's foolishness to a man that's lost, but as soon as he's saved, It becomes a power of God unto salvation because his blinded eyes are open. The vow that covered his heart is taken away and he sees clearly, he sees clearly that there is no God except the God of all creation that created the heavens and the earth and sent his son into this world to save sinners. My friend, your pride, your pride will take you to hell tonight, bound by pride bound by rebellion tonight. I'll go my own way. That's what the prodigal said, didn't he? The prodigal said when he left, 
When he left his father, he said, give me, give me, give me. Just full of himself. That's what sin is. I want, I want, I want. When he came back, he said, make me, make me. You know how he came back? He came back as, read it, he, in Luke 15, he came back as a servant. He, he, he said, I'm no longer worthy. I'm no longer worthy to be your son. Make me a servant. Friend, that's the only way you can come tonight. That's the only way any of us can come, with a bowed knee, surrendered, saying, Lord, have your will and have your way. In my life, friend, you're tired tonight. It, maybe you're tired here tonight by addiction, alcohol, maybe drugs, maybe pornography. But friend, Jesus can set you free. He can set you free tonight for the Bible says whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus set, quoted these words in Luke's Gospel where we read them in Isaiah 61. He said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek and has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty unto the captives and open the prisons to them that are bound. And friend, if you're bound tonight, Christ can set you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow, free from the guilt of the past. I've traded my shackles for this glorious song. Friend, there's a glorious song you can sing tonight if you're set free. I'm free, praise the Lord, free at last. You see, it says in our text, it says, loose him, loose him. It says in verse 2, never man sat, loose him and bring him. And then it says in verse 4, they loosed him. And friend, he can loose you tonight. He can set you free tonight. And if he sets you free, you will be free indeed. What did the hymn writer, what did, he wrote, Long mine in prison spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke, the dungeons flamed with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth and followed thee. Friend, your chains can fall off tonight if you come to Christ. He came to set the prisoner free. Those that are bound in sin, he came to set them free. Listen to what the Bible says in Psalm 102 and verse 19 and 20. For he hath, he hath looked down from, from the height of his sanctuary or from heaven to hear the groaning of the prisoner. Friend, hear, hear your cry. His ear isn't dull that he cannot hear and his arm isn't short that he cannot save. But friend, there must be a cry. There must be a call tonight. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. You must call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. To hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are pointed unto death. Friend, he wants to loose you from the conce, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is, is everlasting life. He can loose you from the consequences. And the curse of sin tonight, he can set you free. But he can do it. Why can Christ do it? Because he paid for my sin and your sin at Calvary. He took our sins and our sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary. Friend, he suffered and he died alone. He bled and died. He took the punishment. He took our whipping, friend. He became a curse. Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. He became a curse that we might be blessed. And friend, I'm, I praise the Lord tonight for the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Have you got it? I've got it. Hallelujah, I've got that blessing. Because my life is hid in Christ in God. I'm born again of the Spirit of God. And friend, you can have it tonight. You can be set free. You can be set free. You know, the Bible says, uh, he speaks about Joseph in, in Psalm 105. It says, the king sent and loosed him. Hallelujah. But the king of kings can loose you tonight. The king sent and loosed him. It says these words, and let him go free, and whom the sun sets free. And the king of kings can loose you tonight and set you free. My friend, you might be like that woman in Luke chapter 13 and verse 11 there. We read about her. 
She was bound for 18 years. The Bible says there she was bound for 18 years and she was bent double. The Bible says it was from the weakness of her infirmities. But you know, Jesus came that day and he set her free. He says, behold, there was a woman which had, in Luke's gospel, which had spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could not wise lift herself. And when Jesus saw, he called her to him. And friend, he's calling you tonight. He says, come now, though your sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. And Jesus saw her and he called her and he said, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmities. And friend, he can loose you. Tonight he can set you free. He, he can set you free and cleanse you from your sin. And Jesus, we read in our text tonight, in verse 2, Jesus said, bring, bring him. That colt of an ass, he said, bring him. And Jesus is calling for you tonight. He says, come unto me. Friend, will you come to him tonight? You know, it's, it's your choice. You can come. You can, it, the prodigal, it was his choice to come back. But he came and he was restored. A ring put upon his finger and shoes upon his feet and a robe, speaking of the robe of righteousness, the garment of salvation. But, but he had to choose when he would come. And you know, in verse 3 it says here, very quickly it says, the Lord hath need of him. And friend, God, God has a plan for your life. The Lord hath need of him. He hath, he hath need of you. When Jesus called the disciples, when he called Peter and Andrew and James and John on the lake of Galilee, he said, come, Come and I will make you. I will make you fishers of men. Friend, he has a plan and a purpose. He has a work for you to do. A work that only you can do. He has a work for you. He says these words in, in, in Isaiah 40. In Isaiah, in, sorry, in Jeremiah, he says, 29, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? The God that sits above the circle of the earth. The, 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 the inhabitants of the earth are like grasshoppers. The, the, the nations are as dust on the scows. He holds the oceans, the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, the Mississippi. He holds the waters of the earth in the hollow of his hands. But yet he thinks thoughts towards you and me. Isn't, that's amazing, isn't it? He sees you tonight. Telling the boys and girls the other day when Jesus saw that crowd coming towards him when he was on the lake of Galilee. He'd gone over because he'd heard that John the Baptist had been beheaded. He just wanted to be on his own. But he saw this crowd, thousands of them, thousands. But he had compassion on them. He didn't see them as a crowd. He saw them as individuals. And God sees you tonight. He sees the very secrets of your heart and he loves you. And he sees you tonight. He says, I, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future. Friend, to give you a future, an expected end, but it means a future and a hope. Friend, he has a future and a hope for you. But friend, you have to come. And then lastly in verse 7, they brought, the, they brought this unbroken cold of an ass. Never a man. He says where never a man had sat. An unbroken cold of an ass. Never a man had sat. And he says this, he sat upon him. Friend, if it had been you or me, that colt would have kicked and thrown us here and thrown us there. But that unbroken colt of an ass, it surrendered to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the creator of the heaven and earth. What about you tonight? Will you surrender? Will you say, Lord, not... Lord, my will, and you'll be done. Friend, that's the only way you can come. That's the only way you can come to him tonight. The psalmist says these words in Psalm 32 and verse 8. He says, he says, Be not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with a bit and a bridle, lest they will not come willingly. To you. In other words, don't be like a stubborn mule tonight. But friend, know that if you come to him, many are the sorrows of the wicked, but he that trusted in the Lord, mercy shall surround him 
about. Mercy there was great and grace was free. But friend, you have to come. You have to bow the knee tonight. You have to surrender all. You know, a fellow went out many years ago to preach to the Native Americans. Never preached to the what they would call the Red Indians before. First night he preached in a tent mission and he gave an appeal. He just put out a little appeal there and the Indian stood up. The Indian walked forward and took off his moccasins and, and just lay him at the order with a young preacher. He, he didn't understand the customs. He thought he was strange. The Indian walked away. And next night he preached again, preached his heart out and he gave an appeal again for those that wanted to receive Christ to come and surrender their lives. And same Indian, same Indian stood up and came forward and with his tomahawk. And he laid his tomahawk at the order and went out again. The young preacher thought this was a strange thing. And you know, he preached the gospel the third night and he gave the appeal again. Same Indian stood up. But he walked, this time he walked out and he went out the tent at the back and he walked in with a great white pony. The, the most valuable thing that he had. And he, he led the pony to the front and he, he left it there and walked away. This young fellow thought, well, this is, this is very strange. And on the fourth night he preached the gospel again. Same red Indian stood up at the end and he walked to the front. Nothing in his hands, nothing on his feet. And he said, Indian, gave moccasins to Jesus, no peace. Indian gave tomahawk to Jesus, no peace. Indian gave pony to Jesus, no peace. Indian, give Indian to Jesus. Indian found peace. Friend, there's only peace tonight. There's only peace tonight when you come, when you come to Christ and give him your all. And he promises to give you his peace, his joy, his everlasting life. Let's sing and close him tonight. I'll ask him, hymn number 600. It says these words in verse 2, All to Jesus I surrender humbly, at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus. Take me now. I surrender all. Let's make it a prayer tonight. And friend, if you've never come to Christ, if you're backslidden here tonight, then friend, before you go, put, get your heart right with God. That you'll be ready when that trumpet sounds. Thank you.
Let's pray. Lord, we just pray that will be more than a song tonight, but it'll be a prayer from each one of our hearts. Lord, we come afresh, surrender our lives to you. Lord, have your will and have your way. Lord, we just pray if there be any, Lord, that have been in the sound of the gospel tonight, Lord, we just pray that no, you're not. Lord, they would just bow the knee, humble themselves. Lord, that they would be loosed and set free. Lord, that they could follow you and know of that blessing of that you give that makes a man rich and adds no sorrow with it. Lord, we bless your name tonight. We thank you there's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Now, Lord, we pray you take us to our home safely. We pray, Lord, that tomorrow, Lord, and through the week, Lord, help each one of us that know you to be a bright and shining light. Lord, we live in a present evil world. and Lord, we, it's getting darker every day, but Lord, help us to shine all the brighter telling men and women and boys and girls of your wonderful love. We give you all the glory, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.